Good morning, guys. Good morning. How are you doing? Great. <laughs> love to hear that. I love to hear that. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep uh, talking. Today, but, um, we have uh, kind of partnered up a little bit with uh, Tutoring Rocks. It's a uh, if you guys aren't familiar, Tutoring Rocks. They uh, they do a lot of the high school tutoring and college preparation work for the various high schools, Folsom, uh, Elder uh, Oakwood High School. Um, so what we're doing today is we're doing a, uh, a virtual whatever you want, whether you want to walk, whether you want to run, whether you want to jog, whether you want a bicycle, whether you want to swim. And what we're asking for people to do today is to um, just take a, a little video of yourself as you're doing it or a picture and post it and hashtag Mini House of Pain or Tutoring Rocks if you want to. Um, and, uh, and just to have some fun, just to do something a little bit. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, Lori Smith, Angie. Uh, Mariam, good morning, Lori, Karen, Susan, uh, Shannon, Big Bobby, um, Kelsey, good morning, Kelsey Ziegler, good morning, Mariam, good morning, tell basically where you are. So, uncharted waters doesn't mean proceed blindly. Hey, guys, you got to mute. It means information, get data. I'll help you guys. Um, well, good morning, and uh, and welcome to another Saturday. <laughs> um, hey, Miriam, I see that uh, for those of the folks who might live in the Folsom area, I see they have taken it upon themselves to ease up in their parks and stuff a little bit, huh? Yeah, I, I saw that today. They're asking, they, they sent a request down to the governor's office for some uh, autonomy in the small businesses in the area. Uh, they're, they're not the only city to have done that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to update you guys here shortly, kind of what I've been through in the past 72 hours, and then we'll kind of go into the talk for today because I like to update you guys as to what's going on. Um, so as you guys know, last week, we uh, if you didn't listen to the governor's address, um, I listened to it very carefully. And he, I'm, I'm going to go two directions here. He came out with a pretty strong, you know, we're going to stay in this. Well, let me back up. A lot of your public health uh, officials, your administrators came out saying, at least up in El Dorado County, that they were gonna lift this, the uh, stay home or stay in. Um, morning Gabe, morning Barb uh, and Steph. Um, they were gonna lift the stay in order, but they were going to have us follow the guidelines of the governor. Well, that was a contradictory statement, guys. Um, when they take an oath of office, whoever the administrators are, whether it's your supervisors or whoever, they take an oath that no matter what, the governor's orders supersede any of their orders. So let's just, let's just leave it at that, okay? So it was very, if you read our, if you read our um, public health administrator, Dr. Williams, if you read her statement, she said she was lifting the order, which she could do, but in the very next paragraph, she said, but you'll be guided by the governor's last directive. So essentially what that meant was, you're still in phase one, you still have stay in orders. Okay, well, I read that and then I, I was like, okay, you know, I, I, I kind of get that a little bit and I, I wrote to her, for clarification. Well, then the governor's um, directives came. 
And originally, gyms, look at my fingers, guys, gyms were supposed to be in phase one. Well, gyms got moved from phase one to phase three. And let me explain why I think that is, that should be done. Okay. Well, when you walk into a lifetime, when you walk into a crunch, when you walk into a 24 hour, when you walk into anytime fitness, they really are going to have to work hard at rearranging their furniture to practice what the governor is asking us to do. And I'll leave that at a high level. They are also a membership based, meaning anybody can pay a fee and walk in there anytime and use everything and anything that they've got. Okay. We, the smaller facilities, studios, if you will, have the ability to limit our membership, meaning class sizes. We have a system in place to return to reopening, utilizing our own autonomy and being safe according to what the governor has asked us to do. So there's a clear distinction between the two. So in the past 72 hours, uh, a few of us gym owners have uh, been working diligently uh, with, my, I, I'll just tell you specifically for me, uh, I've been working diligently with a representative out of the governor's office who is the small business liaison to the governor. Um, I have an attorney who has been able to get with the third in charge in the governor's office, and she led us to this individual. And I have been in correspondence uh, through a portal, and I've now been in correspondence with direct email um, and have been asked to write an email of how I would go about doing this. So in doing that, I reached out to Rocky, who's a great friend of mine in Santa Cruz, runs a facility just like this, Robert Linkle out of Sacramento, and I'm trying to capture the region because it's not just about El Dorado County. It's about giving the business owners the opportunity to one, use the own, their own autonomy to opening back up and being safe. That's number one. Um, and realistically, it's not a matter of saying, I wanna open up next week. It's saying, allow us the autonomy to open up in phase two don't push us to phase three. So on my conversation yesterday morning, I had a conference call at nine to 10. Um, I asked, and I knew they couldn't give me an answer, just working in government as long as I have. I just, I knew they wouldn't do that. So I said to him, if I were to throw out a timetable in trying to get my thoughts wrapped around this, um, I know you're not going to tell me, but am I close? So I said phase two will be within a couple of weeks, I'm assuming. I said my, my guesstimation will be somewhere between May, probably second and third week of May. I said, but phase three is probably not going to happen until after the 4th of July. And the response I got was, your timetable's fairly accurate. So... In the very beginning of this, guys, and I'm telling you, I've, uh, the, uh, I've spent countless hours in the past 72 hours trying to um, really just get certain businesses from phase three to phase two, or at least have somebody listen to it. And the group that we've got put together, the counsel that I'm giving them is, you only have a two-week window. So you need to, every single person needs to get with their healthcare administrator in their county and the pressure has to be put on downtown in the next two weeks and it has to be every day. We can't stop, it has to be every day. And the reason we can't stop is once that two week window-ish closes and phase two starts, 
my guess, they're not going to make any more um, consolidations, if you will, to that plan. And here's why. The governor's office is so overwhelmed right now and so understaffed. And when I say understaffed, I'm not saying not enough people, maybe, but new people, new people that they had to blanket. They had to, guys, you need, you need to mute, please. I tell you this every week, mute your, mute your, your, your pads or I'll just do it for you. Okay. So here's the deal. He had to put out a blanket statement. So what has hurt us? Huntington Beach hurt us. Okay. All of a sudden you got a whole bunch of people who just think they're above the law who are just going to go out and do everything they want to do just because they're sick and tired and they don't have enough wherewithal to, to do what we need to do for the next few weeks or whatever it's going to be. And you know what? I don't want to debate it with anybody. The bottom line is you're asked to do something, just do it. It's pretty simple. Whether it's right or wrong, I respect your feelings. But yeah, I'd like to be back in here training people every day. I'm not doing it though. Okay. Even the folks, the group that I'm working with are like, well, come May 18th, I'm just opening back up. I say, yeah, go ahead, guys. You could do that. Let one person get sick and you weren't supposed to be open. Watch what happens to your business. Not only that, what's the perception you're sending to your students? That, hope everybody's got coffee, that is going to cost your business more than if you were allowed to be open and somebody contracted the virus. And by the way, everybody's either had it or going to get it. So look at what we do. Look at what we do as a nation. We get, we get this, this, we get this virus and the news and the media and everybody blows it out in this huge, huge cloud of smoke. And now it's the worst thing we've ever had. Well, folks, let me help you out. You're, you've already had it. You've already had it. And if you haven't, you're going to get it. Some, some, some phase of it. You're either going to be asymptomatic, you're going to get it like the common cold, or some people, as you've seen, already have had it to the nth degree, okay? And we've talked about where is the high-risk category. We've talked about high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes. We've talked about it. We've talked about it. That's why I want to go into what we're talking about today. So to end that little update, our push in this little committee that's been formed. And so Gabe and my push in all of this with Rocky and a few, several other business owners has been to get us from phase three to phase two. Because we're in phase one right now. Okay. And I will suggest to every business owner out there if you want to be considered to be in phase two, you got some work to do. If you sit back and you don't let yourself be heard, then you're, you're doing one of two things. You're, you're saying, well, let somebody else do the work. Or I'm just good with sitting in phase three. And if you're good with sitting in phase three, look at probably after July 4th to getting back to business, unless something happens. And what's that something? Lawsuits, pressure. But you need to be active in getting your voice out there and why it's important for you to be back open. And there's some very, very key questions you have to answer. Some of those questions, what do you have in place to take care of your employees? What do you have in place to take care of the general public? What do you have in place should somebody contract the disease? What's your plan? 
Gabe and I have a very, very succinct plan here of what we're going to do. Okay, so that's enough said about that. So let's talk about today. <laughs> and the reason I kind of want to talk about this is all I've been hearing for the past two weeks is, hey, guys, have you been doing your workouts? Um, listen to this, guys. Listen to how bad this sounds. No, you know, I really haven't. Um, I'm just not motivated. Uh, you know, I, I just can't really do the weights. Um, I've been doing a lot more running. Um, I'm, uh, Vince, I'm doing some of the weights, but uh, listen to how bad that sounds. Listen to how bad that sounds. Come on, people, you're better than that. So I thought to myself, okay, I'm hearing some weights, I'm hearing some cardio, but I'm not hearing the mix. I'm not here in the mix. Why am I not here in the mix? Why am I not here? And yeah, Vince, did a little bit of car cardio work, did a little bit of weight work. Why am I not here in that? I'm going to tell you why. Well, one or the other is too hard for you. And when I say too hard, it's too hard because right now we're on computers. Well, we took care of that problem because we have coaches teaching classes, okay? We have coaches on film showing you how to do and how to put the workout together. Gabe has diligently put videos. Coaches have diligently displayed themselves to show you how to do this for the time being. And I love this because there's two ways to go about this when we're done. We either stay on video or we come back to the gym and understand the value of being here with these coaches. That becomes really important. But the other reason you're not doing it is you like one more than the other and one is harder than the other. Some of you can't go out and run a 5K. By the way, Everybody that's out on this today, we are doing a virtual 5K when we hang up. You can either do the class at 930 or you can go out and do a virtual 5K. What does that mean? You can run, bike, swim, walk, don't care what you do. Take a picture of yourself and hashtag Minnie's House of Pain or Tutoring Rocks. You kind of partnered up with a friend of mine, Chris, who owns Tutoring Rocks here in town. And just post it. Just post yourself doing something. It's kind of a fun way to, for us as a community to really hang together, okay? So that's today, guys, when we get done. But let's talk about, again, let's go back to why. One is harder than the other. Weights are harder for me, so I'm just going to go out and run, okay? Running is better for me, or cycling is better for me, or hiking is better for me, so I'm just going to go, and I'm going to go do that. I'm not going to do weights, okay? So that led me to saying, Ooh, we need to define some things. <laughs> we need to define some things and we need to define them real quick so you can make a better informed decision of why you should do both, not just one. And don't give me time, folks. Please don't tell me you don't have time. Okay, so let's start by defining things first, okay? Definitions. Um, Cardio versus a resistance workout, right? Cardio workouts can burn what? More calories for you than weight training workout. Ah, depending on your intensity and your duration. Depending on your intensity and duration. So don't miss that. Your metabolism, after a weight workout, your metabolism, after a weight workout may stay elevated longer for you, okay? After weights, then cardio, right? And weightlifting is better for what? Building muscle tissue. Are you getting strong muscle tissue when you're running? A little bit, maybe, a lot, no. Cycling, a little bit, maybe, a lot, no. 
Swimming, a little bit maybe, a lot, no. Okay. So I'm, I'm going slow here so you can really understand this. So the ideal combination, folks, is what? Weights and cardio. That's your ideal combination. That's your ideal combination. All right? Why? After a strenuous weight workout, I just mentioned it, your metabolism doesn't return to normal immediately afterward, okay? Your body continues to use oxygen, right? To do what? Repair muscle and burn fat. So we'll get to which one should you do first. Instead, when you're running, so I remember I mentioned metabolism in the weight training aspect. When you're running and you're engaging in aerobic activity, aerobic time, right? Now, this causes oxygen debt, oxygen debt. And you've heard us refer to it in the gym, at least folks in our classes, at least in the morning, and I'm sure in the afternoon, the coaches have talked about it, but I talk about EPOC, excessive post-oxygen consumption, right? When you're in this state, your body needs extra oxygen to get you back to its resting metabolic rate, all right? So just a little difference there, but then what's the other thing you have to think about? And I mentioned it before, Muscle strength versus muscle endurance. Muscle strength versus muscle endurance. So muscular endurance refers to the ability to perform a specific um, muscular action for a long period of time or a prolonged period of time. Um, for example, being able to do 50 bodyweight squats. 50 push-ups, um, across the field lunges, okay? Muscular endurance, as opposed to muscular strength is the muscle's capacity to exert a huge brute force onto an object. Can I bench press 100 pounds? Can I bench press 95 pounds? Can I bench press 50 pounds? Can I one arm bench press a 20 pound dumbbell? Okay, muscular strength. That's muscular strength. Um, so if you look in real life, um, muscular endurance exercise, um, I don't know. Uh, how long can you rake leaves? How high of a flight of stairs can you be able to walk up? Muscular strength. Um, can I go into the garage and pick up a heavy box or move it to get it out of the way of the car? That make that makes sense, guys? Yes? Give me a thumbs up if it kind of makes sense to you. Cool. Thank you. So let's talk about the four pillars of fitness. Four pillars of fitness. Now, this isn't your movements, okay? This isn't the planes that you're moving in. This is the this this isn't the you know this isn't the push pull, you know squat hinge carry. It's not what I'm talking about here. If you were to categorize the four pillars of fitness, you're talking about strength. You're talking about Good morning, Melissa Dozier. Wipe those sleepies out of your eyes. I know you just got up out of bed. Um, thank you for being here. We're talking, Melissa, about uh, cardio versus weight training exercises. Um, so strength is one of the first pillars. Cardiovascular uh, fitness is the second pillar. Mobility would be the third pillar. And body composition would be your fourth. So. If I, if I were to give you examples from the last, um, Bonnie, I see you, so I'm gonna use you as an example. 
So if a marathon runner just runs, they've developed what kind of endurance or fitness in the pillar? Cardiovascular fitness, okay? But if they neglected the other pillars, now they might be protected from diseases associated with cardiovascular issues, right? And can handle aerobically taxing situations, but now they're susceptible to the consequences of having poor what? Strength, mobility, and body composition. So you took care of one aspect, but you didn't take care of the other three. So the lack of a marathon runner, just in tight list, you know, whomever, um, so the lack of, of strength training for these people, coupled with only moving the joints in one repetitive motion, right, can do what? Cause what? In, yeah, injuries, joint, uh, joint dysfunction, and the other overuse type injuries associated with poor posture and poor immobility. Guys, we talk about T-spines all the time. Well, if you got back problems, then chances are you probably have a really bad T-spine or you have a really bad glute med, or you have a bad piriformis. Look all those things up today. You'll see where they're located and I'm gonna guarantee you, that's where you're gonna find some of your issues. So, um, in real life, if you think about the marathon runner, if they're unable to confidently pick up a 100-pound box off the floor, would you consider that person to be physically fit? Well, God, they run all the time. And I hear that all the Guys, you hear it all the time. Well, Vince, I'm out there. I'm running. Okay. Can you go pick up the 100-pound box in your garage? If you fell down a flight of stairs, could you survive it? Right? I think if you had the four pillars of fitness, your chances of surviving it would be better. Right? Because those are real life things, guys. Those are real life things. I hear it all the time. You know, I was out on my mountain bike and I went over the top of my handlebars. Mm -hmm. Good thing you're only 20 years old. Because if you were 59 years old, it might be a different story if your pillars of fitness aren't there. Right. So the runner, the cyclist, the triathlete, they might be able to escape developing cardiovascular disease later on in life, but their poor mobility and their lack of strength may lead to needing knee replacements, hip replacements, shoulder replacements, um, because the cardiovascular component is only one part. You guys starting to see where I'm going with this? Okay, so what are the benefits of cardio training? Let's talk about that for a second. So when, when you are strong cardiovascularly, you're able to handle your aerobic sessions, um, challenging type sessions, um, a lot better for varying durations, right? What's the leading cause of death in the United States, folks? Heart disease. Heart disease, right? So improving your cardiovascular fitness can reduce your, the risk of developing, you know, heart disease. Why? Why, why, why would it, why does it help? Because you got to kind of understand what you're doing. Because I watch a lot of people, even when we warm up, we get done after 12 minutes, you're not even out of breath. Did you, did you, take care of your cardiovascular fitness in that 12 minutes. If you're not out of breath, you didn't. If you're not uncomfortable, you didn't, okay? But by improving that fitness, you can reduce the risk of developing heart disease because you're increasing the, effic the efficiency of your heart, lungs, and your blood vessels. Remember, so this one I just said, your heart, your lungs, and your blood vessels whole respiratory system, right? The, 
why, why is that important? Because the easier it is, folks, to pump blood through your body, the less taxing it is on your heart. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Your heart's contraction strength. Right? Your heart's contraction strength the elasticity of your blood vessels and the efficiency of your blood to carry oxygen all improve your cardiovascular health. And they all improve with what kind of training? Cardiovascular. Cardiovascular exercises help you maintain a healthy body composition. I hear people all the time, Vince, I just can't lose weight. Go back to your four pillars of strength. Go back to your four pillars of fitness. Go back to your pillars of cardiovascular. You're missing somewhere, folks. And I know I can tell you right now, every single person in the facility, I can tell you whether they like weight training better or they like cardiovascular training better just by the way they train. You don't have to say a word to me. And I already know. I already know. And I know when you're home what you're doing for your training. So today, one of the challenges is going to be, and by the way, most of you on the phone, on, on the line here today that were there last week, none of you got back to me except for Barbara. Thank you very much. Yep, I'm going to call every one of you out. I challenged you guys last week. None of you got back to me except for Barbara about the three things I asked you to do. So how involved in the community are you? Mm-hmm. Throwing it back at you, folks. Um, so cardiovascular activity helps with body composition, right? We've, we've already talked about the nutritional and the recovery elements. So if you are looking to trim down and take care of your body composition, Besides hormonal changes in the body, and that's not an excuse because there's, that's all another conversation. Okay, it's part of an excuse, but it's not the excuse. Um, get out there and start and, and start doing the four pillars. Yes, Angie, you knew it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I, might, I might be old, but I don't, I don't forget. What was your name again? I'm sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Just play. Um, especially at higher intensities, guys. Remember I talked about you guys not, not even being out of breath when you're warming up? Okay. That's higher intensities. Also contributes to a higher calorie burn. So, for instance, if I'm out riding, I can tell you right now. And it's funny because I was going to send to one of the UFC guys last week. But he rode 50 miles. 50 miles. He only climbed like 900 feet, 50 miles, 900 feet. And I think he, I think his calorie burn was like 1200. I went 18 miles. I climbed 2000 feet and I burned 1700 calories. So I just sent him my Strava. Right. I didn't have to go 50 miles guys. But was I taking care of my cardiovascular health? Did I do my strength training? Did I do my mobility work? You better believe I did. Every time before I go out, I have to, right? So um, not only are you getting a better workout with a higher intensity, but you're getting a higher calorie burn. So how does that work? The fat you store in your body is reserved for periods of prolonged activity, guys. So training your cardiovascular system through high intensity interval increases the activity of certain hormones, such as what guys? We talk about it all the time, testosterone growth hormone. That does what? That stokes fat burning. And yes, I don't care what age you are, okay? You're gonna stoke those two things, okay? While low intensity 
steady state cardio burns a high percentage of fat, high intensity exercise results in a greater total calorie burn and speeds up the enzymes associated with burning fat. That's gonna be real important when I get to which one should you do first, weight training or cardio. And there's a huge debate on that, okay? Uh, I, don't, I don't debate it, I basically stick to the basics. Um, but I'll, I'll give you kind of some little sub Q things for you to, to just think about and you handle it the way you wanna handle it. You know, if you're training for a marathon, then you might wanna do your, your cardio work first so you can maximize that. But I'm going to, I'm going to give you Melissa. I don't know how you got the hell out of the room. Okay, Melissa, you're back in again. Um, Jiminy crickets y'all. Um, so let's talk about training tips and these aren't all, these are just, these are just some vary your cardiovascular activities, guys. If you're a runner, Throw in some biking, throw in some rucking where you put a pack on your back with a little weight and go for a hike. Um, go swim. And so, ooh, somebody's, somebody's breathing like Darth Vader. Um, okay, <laughs> somebody's coughing like Darth Vader. Okay, I'm muting you, Melissa Dozier. Okay, Jesus Christmas. Melissa, you and I got to have a separate session alone for crying out loud. You're killing me, girl. All right. Vary your cardiovascular activity. Your body quickly adapts, folks, um, to the type of training that you do. So if you go out and you run and it's hard, by the end of the week, if you've been running, it'll get easier. If you haven't ridden a bike, but you've been running, you go out and ride a bike, it's going to be hard. Your body will adapt. It will get easier. Um, to continue to reap the rewards and benefits, guys, of your cardiovascular work, change up the equipment and form of training. Bike, swim, run, sled push, circuit training, battle ropes. Ay, 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 ay. I can go on and on and on. Okay? And all of that can be cycled throughout your week, throughout your month. Don't worry, Melissa. I still love you. I just wanted to pick on you. It's okay. Um, hell, I kind of want to make this feel like you're right here at the gym. You know what I mean? Come on. <laughs> um, so it can be cycled throughout your training, guys. Be very challenging and it can be really effective. So switch it up. Switch it up. If you're running, run intervals. So train at appropriate intensities. What is the key to training at appropriate intensities? Ready? Everybody should have a heart rate monitor. If you don't have a heart rate monitor, you have no clue what you're doing. You have no clue what you're doing. You just go out and you go, oh, that was hard. Oh, I can't get up that hill. Oh, I got halfway up that hill. Can't understand why I couldn't get up the rest of it. Look at your heart rate. Look at your heart rate. Okay? It's one of the best pieces of equipment, guys, that get, and I've said it all the time, that you can buy for dialing in your cardiovascular training. And it's actually good for your weight training, too. Watch what happens when you do a set of squats. Watch where that heart rate goes. Does your heart rate know if it's, does your heart rate know when it's at 160? Does it know if it's a squat or if you're running up a hill? Nope, it doesn't. 160 is 160, folks. That's why the kettlebell is so great. Gabe and I love the kettlebell. Because what is the kettlebell? It's mobility, it's stability, it's strength, and it's conditioning all in one exercise all in one exercise within 10 minutes you can have your heart rate up to 150 only not even if you push it dog only if you push it exactly all only if you push it if you don't push it well the swings i don't see i don't get it well if you're not pushing it you won't get it so you guys you hear gabe there it is if you ain't pushing it you ain't getting it that's why we see people all the time coming to gyms who don't make changes. Why aren't you making the changes? Because you're not following the pillars. I'm not gonna, and today I swear I promised myself I'm not going to talk about nutrition. I'm just going to mention it softly. Did you hear me? Shh, listen, Shh, nutrition. 
Did you hear? Nutrition. Nutrition. Did you hear me? I promise I wasn't going to talk long about it. I didn't. I just said the word. Okay. And we're all guilty. We're all guilty. I'm not going to be a hypocrite here. I'm guilty too. Yeah, I had my pizza last night. Yes, I did. But I didn't put the pesto on it. Okay, heart rate monitor. Try to exercise within 60 to 80%, guys, of your maximum heart rate to achieve what? Your best results. 60 to 80%, guys. Not 25%. Not 25%. That's like Miriam walking with Leo hand in hand. <laughs> and as long as she's been married, I know that shit don't happen anymore either. <laughs> okay? If you don't have a, a, a heart rate monitor, then you guys go to what we call um, perceived rate of exertion, right? We've had it up in the gym here forever. You know, you if you can walk and talk, you're good. If you really don't want to talk to me, you're better, right? If you're blue in the face, yeah, you probably should stop, <laughs> okay? Perceived rates of exertion. Um. So what would that be? Um, I don't know. A six on a scale of 20 would be sitting on a couch. A 20 would be <laughs> running for your life. So I got a good, I got a cool little thing. You know, uh, people talk about uh, motivation and there's a cyclist and it says some day it's days it's hard to get motivated and then right behind the cyclist going up a, a hill, looks like Tahoe is a bear chasing him. It says, some days motivation finds you. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. Give yourself uh, appropriate uh, rest times, guys. Okay, try to set your workouts. If you're going to do interval work, um, anywhere, I don't know, from in the beginning, 15 to 30 seconds. Uh, typically, we would go 60, but... Let's say 15 to 30 um, and, and use the work rest ratios that we have here at the gym. Go one to one, right? So if you're 30 seconds on, you're 30, sec you're 30 seconds off. If you go one to two, you're 30 seconds on, you're one minute off. Okay, so use those intervals to help you. Now, here's what people do with intervals. You ready? They start off doing really good. They're going to go one to one, right? One to one. I'm going to go... 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Well, then that oxygen deficit comes in. Oh, yeah, I think that was 30 seconds, and all of a sudden you're in a minute and a half of rest time. Well, guys, you're not getting better there. Now, again, listen to your body. I'm not saying don't do that, okay? But if you want to get better, work the work to rest ratios, okay? And I think the other thing you have to do in order to progress, you have to track. Whether you add seconds to your intervals, take away seconds from your rest, uh, increase the total number of intervals you perform, um, always progress. Because when you progress, trust your body. It's going to adapt. The body's going to adapt. Okay? Don't get yourself hurt. Know your body. Know your body. Okay? So. Hopefully, that helps with cardiovascular stuff. So let's talk about weight training benefits for all ages. I'll start with all ages first. Um, you just enjoy better body mechanics, okay? And an improved quality of life overall, just overall, okay? Um, when I talk about body mechanics, I'm talking about your posture. I'm talking about your balance. I'm talking about basic movement patterns. How many of you now, and just think about it, okay, or you can type into the chat, how many of you right now have difficulty with basic movement patterns? Go and bending over, touching your toes, okay? Um, be, when you get out of bed in the morning, you know, how difficult it is you to get up off the floor. One of the tricks I like to do is sit people on the floor, have them put their hands by their ears, and without using their arms and their hands, get up off the floor. Okay? Well, if you're taking care of your four pillars of fitness, OK, 
okay? If you're taking care of your four pillars of fitness, you should be able to do this, folks, and do it fairly easily. So I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a little example. I was at a bike race last year and had a couple of guys ask me, you know, about the gym and just friends of a friend. And we were sitting there and this one guy, Bob, was on sit, sitting there and he said, so Vince, what is it exactly you guys do and how do you do it? So I started explaining it to him and I said to him, he's, a, he's like, oh, he goes, uh, that doesn't sound too bad. And I said, well, let's do a little something. I said, and we just got done riding 72 miles. I said, let's, how about if you sit on the floor, put your hands by your ears and go ahead and stand up. So he sat down um, and no, there was no alcohol involved at that point. And he sat down and uh, the first thing he did is he started to move and put it, I go, no, 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 Bob, you can't do that, man. You can't use your arms and you can't use your hands. Stand up. And he looked at me and he goes, Vince, I can't do that. He goes, but don't you worry when you get to be my age, you're not going to be able to do it either. I said, oh, how old are you, Bob? He says, I'm 55. I said, good, because I'll be, I'm 59 this year. He goes, can you do it? I sat down, stood up instantly. He was blown away. He goes, man, he goes, I guess I got to do something. I said, yeah, I guess you got to come see me. And he was just like, do you think he's coming? No. 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 So that'll be my, that's going to be the last thing I'm going to talk about. What's going to happen to people like that? Because it's going to happen. It's going to happen to us all eventually. But if you can do things to prolong it, Okay, so your posture, your balance, basic movement patterns. In the U.S., and it's not just the U.S., it could be Hong Kong, it could be, I don't care where the hell you're at, okay? We work hard, folks, and, our, and, and I think what's happening now is a great example of, um, I saw a video of, from, a, from a pastor, and he, like in the situation we we're going through now, of, of, a, of a picture of a baby, a baby walking on a treadmill. And as parents and our society, the, we put these expectations on these kids as they grow and the treadmill gets faster and faster and faster and faster. And, fa and think about the baby growing into being a, a, a young girl or a young boy and then adolescence and then young adulthood. And then all of a sudden they're getting ready to go off into college and the treadmill's just going as fast as it can go. The cool thing was the analogy was right now, God has shut the button down on that treadmill and said, no, we're going to stop. We're going to stop the nonsense. We're going to stop working from six o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. We're going to stop and I'm going to stop it. Because when people are doing that, they're hunched over at their desk. They're hunched over at their dinner table. They're eating dinner by themselves. They're not spending the quality time doing what they need to do for themselves. They're not taking care of their posture. They're not taking care of their balance. They're not taking care of their movement. They're not taking care of their strength. They're not taking care of their food. They're not taking care of their health. They're not, they're not, they're not. And we bought into it, folks. You know why we bought into it? Well, I got college education. I got a house to pay for. I got two houses to pay for. I got four cars. I got, I got, I got. You know what you got? You got a timeout, folks. You got a timeout. And nobody likes it. I don't like being in timeout. I don't like being in timeout. I didn't do anything wrong. Hmm. Didn't say you did anything wrong. I'm just giving you a timeout to take care of you. So we work really hard. It's common to start work early. It's common to finish late. All while hunched over at a desk, a screen, a couch, or dinner table. This leads to all kinds of issues, guys, as you well know. 
backs, hips, shoulders, necks, hamstrings, feet. I don't care what it is. This can all be alleviated. Majority of it can be alleviated starting right here. Look at me. Look at your screens. Starting right here. Your mindset. And folks, I'm going to tell you, I know your excuses. I know your excuses. And some of you are still using them today at home, in front of your computers, not in front of your computers. You're still using them. But a lot of this can be alleviated and resolved with carefully planned strength training, which we have given to you graciously. I'm going to tell you right now, I will venture there are people who have taken equipment from this facility who've never even used it since they've been home. And if you did, maybe one time. And I still want you to have the equipment. I asked for people to post right now, today, today. Anybody that's on this from today until Monday now, now I'm shortening the span. You have to pay rent on that equipment. You know what your payment is? Take a picture of you using the equipment and you can send it to me separately. You can put it on Facebook, I don't care. But you have to take a picture of you using the equipment. That's your rent payment. What else does weight training do for all ages? It gets you lean, folks. It boosts your metabolism. I just talked about that. And the number of calories you burn during and after the workout. Which is the key to what? Fat loss and maintaining lower levels of body fat. Because muscle does what? Burns fat. And of course, we've already talked last week about chronic diseases. Um, it's definitely can eliminate, eliminate the, a lot of your symptoms of, of arthritis. It builds build a bigger and better strong bone mineral density to offset what? Ladies, especially osteoporosis. Helps di diabetics manage their blood sugars and just improve your your moods, your general, just general well-being, your energy levels. You know, one of the first things I talked about weeks ago, uh, I'm just so tired. Well, get the hell up and go walk, go exercise. Don't tell me about it. You know the solution. You know the solution. So aids in the management of any chronic diseases, guys. So what, do we, what does it do as we age? What does it do as we age? So I'm going to give you a fact here from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. They recommend that all adults do some type of strength training that hits all the major muscle groups. And we've talked about the movements, right? We have them on the workouts. Push, pull, hinge, squat, and carry. There's your major groups. I don't want to talk about, I don't want to talk about the major muscle groups. We know what those are. It's your prime movers your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, your latissimus dorsi. I, I don't want to get into that. It's not an anatomy class, guys. If you just do the exercises we gave you, you're going to hit your major muscle groups. And you have to do this at least a minimum, folks, of two times a week. A minimum. That's your minimum. So what if you can't do it two times a week? Because your health precludes you from that. Ready for this one? As many as you can that your body allows. And don't use an excuse as the reason you're not doing them. Well, my body wouldn't allow me to do it. There's nobody on this call 
Their body doesn't allow them to do it. Nobody. The will and the want. You have to have the will to want to do it. You have to have the will to save your own life. You have to have the will to offset the chronic diseases. And you ready for this? No job that you do is worth that sacrifice. No job, stop yawning, Corinne. No job that you do is worth that sacrifice. So that's just a fact out of the US Department of Health. But guys, the human body changes as we age. And guess what? Usually in ways we don't like it to. All right? That's, again, a whole nother topic. Everybody got coffee? Take a sip. You're going to need it. Corinne, you need some energy. Even healthy, normal aging includes your metabolism slowing down your muscle mass and strength losses. Guys, you realize by the time you're 70 years old, if you don't add in your strength training, you're probably going to lose 60% of your muscle tissue. It's about one pound a year after the age of 40, folks. 60%. So yeah, don't, don't do your strength training workout. You think it's hard to get off the floor now? Wait. Increased body fat. Now I'm talking about as we age. And I'm talking healthy aging. This is what you're losing. This is what's happening. Reduced bone density. Stiffer joints, slower reflexes and reaction times, and decreased aerobic capacity. So if you look at your four pillars, everything in each pillar is decreasing when you don't do anything. When you choose not to do your full workout, when you choose not to do anything on a day. Okay. So which one should you do first if you're trying to lose weight? Yeah, let me break it down for you. To me, this is the most debated question I get all the time. Should I do my cardio first? Should I do my weights first? I'm trying to lose weight, Vince. Okay. So when you strength train first, hold on, let me decline that. Your body will be using up most of its glycogen stores. It's, a, it's the form of glucose that your body sources from what? what? What element that you eat? Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. Okay? Which is your body's first choice of energy. Okay? That's your body's first choice of energy. But once the glycogen is gone and used up, that's the energy, right? Your body switches to its second choice which is fat. So by the time you set down those weights and then you head to the treadmill or the elliptical or the mountain or the bicycle, I don't care what it is, now's the time you should start burning the fat in your body instead of the glycogen, which leads to greater weight loss, guys. Okay, does that make sense? So your weights first burns up the glycogen. Your body's second choice, go to fat. So I think that's the easiest way to look at this. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. To me, weight training is like a, a steak or a lobster dinner. The weight training is the steak and everything else after that is nothing but a side dish. Okay? And you're talking to a guy who does a ton of endurance training. I know I don't look like it, but I do. But I also do 
my weight training. And I also do my bells. And I'm also very tired when I get done. So to kind of sum everything up for you, I'm going to go back to this. I want to go back to the fact that I gave to you guys uh, last week. Nearly two thirds of the American adults are overweight or obese. Two thirds, folks. Okay. So, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and I want you to look it up, a healthier diet training program can prevent at least 71 billion per year in medical costs and loss of lives. 71 billion a year. And that number, as I told you guys, is underestimated because it doesn't account for diet-related coronary heart disease and strokes and cancer and diabetes and all that other stuff. 75% of healthcare dollars are spent on treating preventable diseases. But we insist on making the excuses of why we can't do something. I always say, and I'm, I'll tell you this, why would you ever leave it up to a doctor to tell you, I, you know what, Corinne, Bonnie, Miriam, Angie, Bob, Vince, I'm sorry, I can't repair that anymore. You're, now, you're, now you have to live with that for the rest of your life. Why would you wait for that when you, me, can do something to prevent that. So, in its simplicity, <laughs> the ideal exercise program for improving your four pillars is weights and cardio. Weights and cardio. You know, as I look and I'm on the chat, great, exactly. Corinne, right? More mobility. Love it. I love it. Anne Marie, yeah. Our workouts are designed up and down. Exactly. But people don't do it. You know, they don't do the things we're asking them to do on a daily basis because it's hard. It's not easy. It's not easy. Um, you know what, guys, uh, as far as equ equipment, I'm out. I'm out of equipment. <laughs> Everything uh, that could be out of the facility other than, you know, 70 on, on up uh, uh, dumbbells, uh, I'm out. TRX, everything's out. We're, so we'll have that return date, hopefully sooner than later. And I'll talk about that real quick. I just want to answer some of these. Um, Craig, would you make sure that Anne Marie can get onto your band class? Guys, are you really kidding me? Craig does a band class and nobody's, nobody even gets on the damn call. Are you kidding me? You guys gotta be kidding me. I don't want to hear that you don't have equipment to, to, to do resistance work with. That's a choice. That's a choice. Um, so today, remember, Oh, Jamie Lancaster. We got to give her a shout out. And she crushed the steps. The, 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 she crushed the challenge. I mean, she, she, you know, she obliterated it. Um, she did 100, 111,000 steps. She gets a $10 Starbucks card, folks. $10 Starbucks card. Jamie, great job, great job. So, folks, people are out there crushing it. People are out there crushing it. You can too. You can too. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions? I know that I ran over just a little bit, but guys, I got to tell you, I was so passionate about this because I really wanted to clear up any misconceptions, All right? And if you didn't learn anything today, you know you have to combine the two. You know when you're doing your cardio work, you gotta get out of breath, okay? If you need me to um, 
have it sent out. I can share again, Erin McGurr from uh, Perform Better. Um, she has kind of a package deal for our folks for buying equipment, any, any of your needs. Um, what's that, Bonnie? You're still muted. Go ahead. You're still muted, Bonnie. I'll unmute you. Hold on. Okay. Go ahead. What were you going to say? They're sold out. I've gone on there three or four times trying to get a kettlebell, and they're sold out. Did you contact Aaron? No, not directly. You might want to contact Aaron. <laughs> oh, they have a special supply for us? I have connections. Oh, I see. I have connections. So when I get done, um, it's, let me just share just real quick with you. I think you, you shared it before. I think I did, but just, I'm on, so you guys can take this down. Um, okay, it's Aaron, E-R-I-N dot McGurr, M-C-G-I-R-R, at performbetter, all one word, dot com. So it's Aaron dot McGurr, M-C-G-I-R-R, at performbetter.com. Now, as far as the amounts, I don't know what they have, but I do know like Alan Carlton contacted her directly last week and she got him his kettlebell. Oh, so, anyway. I'll tell Jonathan too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just, again, I don't know, maybe not large amounts, but they do have, they do have a quick, just, you really need to let her know you're training with me. Okay. Right. I just want to mention something, Vinny. If yeah. you don't have weights, you can make them. I don't know if uh, I don't know if uh, Caitlin has shared with you, but we have built a gym here at the Sandbergs with concrete. Um, I will send. I'll. She'll send you. She should send you some pictures. We have uh, used. Uh, anyways, we have discs that are concrete. We they use um, blocks. It's quite amazing. And the boys said, so they have gym time here every day at four o'clock, the young boys. And they said, you know what? We are getting a better workout here than when we went to the gym because the Sandbergs have built concrete weights. It's quite funny. And Bonnie, do you know why that is? Why, they, why the, the concrete? Uh, and it doesn't have to, <laughs> that you don't actually have to build them. Uh, I'm going to be, I'll be honest with you, in my backyard, when I broke up concrete, uh, when I first moved in, I kept certain sizes oh. of broken concrete. And I utilized, Vinny and I utilized that to do lunges up and down the hill, um, side lateral lunges, squat work. And we hold them like the strongman stones. Um, but they also create an imbalance in the body, right? Because they're, you know, one side might be a little heavier than the other side, yeah. just like we do in the gym. You know, we make you carry a six, uh, maybe a 12 kg here, but a 16 kg here. It's the same philosophy. So it's that that whole balance thing that that we can create, uh, even with stuff at home. But even at home, guys, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day. You don't have to use weights to create the progressive overload. Use time. Do your you do your squats in a five and an eight count, down and up. So five count down, thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, thousand four, thousand five, hold, up, thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, thousand four, thousand five. Time under tension, you're still creating a trauma in the muscle cell, right? You're still creating that trauma to allow for more growth in a larger area. So you don't have to load. And the other thing is too, like I said to you guys a couple of weeks ago, you know, we're in a, we're in a um, stressful time. So why add more stress to the body, right? Why add more stress? Keep it at a minimum, allow your body to function throughout the day and get the things done, but get, uh, get the rewards from it, okay? Um, the other thing and the last thing I'll leave you with is, please folks, don't put a time frame on this. I'm starting to hear some real stupid stuff out there. I don't care what they say. I'm going to open and I'm going to, I'm tired of staying at home. I'm not going to. That's paranoia. Okay. Yeah. We're all tired of this. 
stay disciplined, be creative, and have productive paranoia. Nobody wants to come out of this more than I do. Nobody wants to get back to business more than I do. And we're going to. We just got to do it the right way. We got to do it the safe way. So understand, when you guys come back here, you're going to be very safe. Trust me. The procedures that I'm putting in place, you have nothing to worry about. The people, for those of you who have been staying with us and paying your memberships, I hope you are happy with everything, the value that we're providing to you. For those of you who haven't been able to or have had to have a reduction, we're going to take care of you no matter what. That's who I am. That's what I believe in. That's what I do. It's what I've always done. Okay? So, I can't thank you enough. I think I'll be back at the governor's contact today again, as soon as I get done here. He'll be receiving uh, my email to him directly. Hopefully we'll have a meeting um, next week. The two weeks is critical because once, once they go from phase one to phase two, they're not going to be apt to make any changes anytime soon. So I need to make sure somehow, some way we can get ourselves into that phase two. So the group that I'm working with, I'm going to be after them as soon as I get off the phone because I'm not going to allow them to rest. They need to, they need to get, they need to get on their computers. They need to hit their people. They need to stay in their heads all day long to get this done. So um, we're working diligently behind the scenes uh, for my groups. If you haven't heard too much from me, it's, it's because from, from night to day, I've been working at this down with the state and with the local um, health uh, administrator um, for the past 72 plus hours. And I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop folks. Um, I'm not going to stop because getting back open means so much to so many people. And it's the right thing to do. It's as long as you can stay in the criteria, it's the right thing to do. Okay. So guys, we're going to continue to deliver to you. Um, you know, the next thing I'm going to hear from people is this Vince Folsom says they're going to open up their parks. Well, that's good. That's good. And when it's safe, yes, we can do a training session in the park. But until we have that directive, folks, I'm not going against that grain. I will push from the contacts and the level that I have, which is a very high level with some folks, and I'm going to operate from there. And I'm going to operate from there because I need to make sure I'm keeping everybody safe and doing the right things. So bear with us a little bit longer. We could do this standing on our heads. Okay, we can do this, right? Let's not get tired. Let's not get tired. Let's take it one day at a time. One day at a time. I am going to encourage you, pay attention to every address. Pay attention to what comes out from the public health people. Okay, because that's going to be changing weekly. Because they're tired of it too. But they have to push downtown. The pressure has to go downward and upward to make this happen. Okay? Yes, you're going to see social distancing stuff happening, happening all over. But if you read the rules and regulations, it says no team activities. No team activities, folks. So if you're seeing soccer training, they're putting kids at risk. Sorry, I'm not willing to do that. Okay, guys, I know you're tired. I get it. I'm just having some fun because just to lighten up the the whole the whole mood of things, right? Keep our energy flowing. Please participate today, Angie, uh, Brian. I'm going to call you out. Yep, participate today and post for me your 5K activity, guys. You can do it with your family. I don't, care. I don't care if it's a simple walk. Go do it. Bob McCarthy, yes, please 
send me something. Um, guys, we're only as good a community as we are staying together and helping each other. Okay? So if nobody has any other questions, I'm going to get off this line. And I want to wish you guys a happy Saturday, a safe Saturday. I will keep you guys updated as, as things go along. Okay? Take care and thank you for being on. And I will see everybody Wednesday Facebook Live and I'll see you next Saturday for sure. My folks, I will be uh, in touch with you and updating you a little bit more as well. So I will be touching base with all of you. Have a great day. Bye, Vince. Bye-bye, Bonnie. Thanks, Vince. You're Thank so you, Vince. Great. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Steph, take care, brother. Go get it, Shannon Guzzo. You owe me workouts. Melissa, Jim Lyons, thanks. It's great seeing you, buddy. Guys, 930, if you guys can jump on that class, go get it. I'm doing it right that, now. That a girl. Bye, Vance. Bye, guys. Hello, Carly. Gotta go. Hello. Oh, Carly Howard's going out doing something today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I gotta get off here. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you do. <laughs>